lush. Swamis to open up our service today. I'm Reverend Sandy and I want to welcome you. Wait a second. Here's the screen. I want to welcome you. <laughs> if you were here, I'd give you a great big hug. But if, um, if since we're not meeting um, in, in, in live services, just consider yourself hugged virtually. It's so nice to have you join us today. And we begin our service with the reading of the Daily Word. The Daily Word, just as a reminder, is an inspirational reading every day that you can get delivered into your email inbox or in a hard copy. You can get it on your phone as well as an app. And the word, word for today is world peace. The road to world peace begins with my open-hearted acceptance of those who are different than me. Our world is vast and diverse 
and its people come from a wide variety of cultures and histories. The more I learn about those whose lives differ from mine, the more I can appreciate their perspectives and empathize with their struggles. When I make the decision to understand others, I discover that judgment fades in the light of compassion. Today, I sow peace through my acceptance and understanding. Peace in the world grows as I join my brothers and sisters in celebrating the glory of human diversity and affirming oneness in God. And our scripture is from Isaiah 2.4. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a song too, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and our affirmation is on the screen here. And if you can see it and read it, I invite you to join me as we speak it. Celebrating diversity and affirming unity, I am a presence of peace in the world. And let's say that once more and take it to heart. Celebrating diversity and affirming unity, I am a presence of peace in the world. And as we move into a time to contemplate being a presence of peace, connecting with our heart space and recognizing that on the spiritual level, our spiritual essence is always at peace, always expressing peace. So we align our thoughts, our hearts, with that presence of peace within. And breathing that in, allowing it to unfold in ever deepening, deepening ways allowing it to expand throughout our lives, throughout our nation, throughout the world. And setting the intention for today to come back to remember the peace that we are whenever we forget. So it is. Amen. Well, I'm really excited to have more music from the underground swamis. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and a fighting I want to know why this bumping and a boring I want to know we should really love each other in peace and harmony instead Like we ain't supposed to be. Why this buzzing and a fighting? I wanna know. Why this bumping and a boring? I wanna know, Lord, I wanna know. We should really love each other in peace and harmony. Stop your fussing, fighting. Stop your fussing, fighting. Cause 
of Babylon. Swami's lined up for us outdoor concert in warmer weather. So be looking for more information on that. I'm excited. I hope you are too. So we've been doing a Lenten series on uh, this last sayings of Jesus. And today our scripture comes from John 19 verses 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. So these words were spoken while Jesus was on the cross. And they, they were addressed to John, the disciple he loved, as well as his mother Mary. And at first glance, it may seem as though he was making sure that they would be provided for, cared for, looked after um, each other, you know, as if they were family after he left this earth plane. And certainly this is something that the gospel tells us happened because John took Mary into his own home after that. And it, it's something that I think that we all would like to do, make sure that our loved ones are comforted and provided for. Um, and it may behoove us to to make plans now in our will and checking out inheritance laws and uh, maybe even help repair relationships within the family so that our loved ones are comforted after we leave this earth plane as well. But that's not the message for today. Oh no. <laughs> because you know in unity we like to look at things metaphysically. Metaphysically meaning beyond the physical. 
looking at how each character is symbolic of a state of consciousness within us. You know, the word metaphysics, some scholars believe, came from Aristotle's writing, a collection of 14 books. Um, and this, this collection was known as Aristotle's Metaphysics. However, that's not what Aristotle called it. Sometime after his death, an editor of his works titled this collection of 14 books after the physicals. I'm not going to say it in Greek. It, it, it's not good, okay? <laughs> because, and it was referring to after another collection of Aristotle's works, Aristotle's physics. So metaphysical has come to mean the study of that which is beyond the physical. In other words, the spiritual. So in looking at this brief passage, um, metaphysically, there are a couple different ways that we can go with it. And I'd like to share what I have kind of unearthed now. I think this passage has something to teach us. Seeing John as symbolic of the power of love. You know, Charles Fillmore identified 12 powers within each of us. Charles Fillmore, of course, is the co-founder of Unity, and he identified 12 powers within everybody that we can, we can bring into our daily lives, and love is one of them. He saw each of the 12 disciples as symbolic of one of the powers, and John, whom Jesus loved, is symbolic of the power of love that we have. Mary is uh, written of in the, script, in the Christian scriptures as the soul that magnifies the Lord daily in the temple. The Lord, which is our I am, the Lord of our being, our higher self. And the temple, well, we're told the body is the temple of God. So magnifying the Lord, or I am, our our I am, is taking time out daily to bring our divine selfhood into greater awareness, to magnify it, to make it of larger importance in our lives, to magnify the energetic, energetic vibrations within our body. There's a connection between the power of love and a greater awareness of who we are as divine beings. When we love, when we love with a healing, an unconditional love, we move into greater clarity of who we are, that essence of spirit. When we take time daily to focus on our, our spiritual side, our higher self, we move into a greater awareness of the love that we are. We also move into a way of expressing this love more freely. Love wants to be expressed, expressed coming from the root to press out. Its very nature is to express itself, to expand. We don't keep it to our heart, within our hearts. We allow it to press out from ourselves. Another look at the words in this passage, and if, for this I use the revealing word, which is kind of a, um, a starting point to metaphysical interpretation. It's like a dif dictionary, and you can look up different terms in it. And for some, it had that in us, which discerns the difference between truth and error. And here, error is thought, the, the mistaken ideas that we have about our, ourselves, about each other. So that within us that can tell the difference between our mistaken thoughts and the truth of the reality of our being with a capital R. And mother is that in within divine mind, which is the intelligence in back of the universe of which we are a part that nurtures and brings to a spirit, spiritual ideal into fruition. In other words, gives birth to this spiritual ideal, this spiritual ideal such as love, such as peace. It brings it into our lives. A spiritual ideal is really just another thought that we're holding, but it's being held in divine mind as well. 
thoughts of perfection, our wholeness, our com completeness. So as we discern from the limiting thoughts that keep us playing thought and small and safe and kind of recognize, we move into recognition of the truth of who we are, we can see, we can look and see the pattern of wholeness held in divine mind. We can behold our completeness. To behold is to, it's really more than, than just looking. It's seen with amazement. It's seen with awe. Woman, behold your son. Behold your sister, your brother, your father, your mother, your daughter. Look with amazement at this beautiful, beautiful expression of spirit. So this may bring up a couple questions, discerning the truth of our being. How do we go about doing that? Well, I came across a haiku poem recently. You know, I love haiku. Do you remember it's five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, three short lines. And here we go. In the stillness of a soft, moonlit field beyond, the wind whispers true. In quiet times, in times of stillness, we hear that whisper, that gentle whisper of spirit. When we leave all the distractions of the day behind and go to a place where time stands still, we hear that whisper that whisper of truth. You know, Jesus told us that the truth will set us free. And this is so on all levels, whether we're tempted to lie about something in order to protect ourselves or another, or if we see it from a higher perspective, becoming more truthful in our speech by saying what we mean, meaning what we say, or even from a higher yet perspective, a spiritual perspective, the truth of who we are, our being. Alan Lovis, um, author of Pocket Peace, tells us there's probably nothing we could do that would have a more immediate positive effect on our lives and on those around us than becoming more mindful of the words we speak. In the Buddhist tradition, skillful speech is more than just refraining from telling lies, although that's that's probably a good place to start, <laughs> is defined as speaking truthfully, the truth of someone, compassionately, supportively, not only to others. If someone comes to you and they're going through a hard time, speaking truthfully to them would seem beyond the circumstance, seeing the truth of who they are, in spirit, not only with others though, but with ourselves as well. Instead of the inner critic that we have, speaking truth to ourself. Knowing the truth who you are, who you really are, is liberating. It moves us past all those limitations that we place upon ourselves. The truth whispers in our hearts. You are more than you think you are. You are magnificently made, and you have the ability to love the house down. So how do we bring this love into our daily lives? I want to share with you a story. Well, it's not actually a story. It's a news article that I read recently about Chelsea, who is a 32-year-old delivery driver. And she was on her last delivery of the day in Texas, and the storm was coming in full force. And the roads were getting icy and um, hazardous. And she was praying as she pulled into the driveway that she would be able to stop the car and not hit the house. And she was praying and praying and her prayers were answered. She didn't hit the house, but her car did end up in the flower bed beside it. So the couple, Doug and Nina, who lived there, came out to help her try to push the car back onto the driveway, and they really, they, they just couldn't do it. 
So Chelsea called a tow truck and uh, she was going to just kind of camp out in her car when Doug and Nina said, hey, we've had our shots, our vaccinations already. Why don't you come in where it's warm and, you know, uh, and just wait for the tow truck there. So Chelsea puts her mask on and goes into the kitchen and, and sits there and waits and waits and waits for that tow truck. And then she gets the word out that the tow truck driver could not make it because the roads were too bad and the stormy weather too severe. So she gets her phone out and she starts looking for a nearby hotel to stay. But when Doug and Nina heard that she was trying to find some place to walk to in this weather, they said, no, stay here with us for tonight. You know, so she did. And one night turned into five. And out of that came a, a, a friendship, a friendship blossom as they ate together and cooked together, played games and conversed. And Chelsea became a member of the family. We start to show love to each other by treating one another with kindness. Science has shown that devoting resources to others rather than having more and more for yourself brings about a lasting sense of well-being. Kindness has been found by research as well to be the most important predictor of, of, a, of a stable and satisfying relationship. And many colleges now, including Harvard, are emphasizing kindness on the application for admission. Kindness, the root of which is kin, seeing each other as family, knowing that we are connected in spirit. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. We are all related with one heart, one spirit. Oneness, though, may be harder to translate into our daily lives then kindness. Kindness is the place to start. So we're going to move into a time of meditation now. And as you adjust your, your position, if you like, get a little bit more comfortable. This will be a, a guided meditation followed by a, a few moments of, of quiet. And we'll end the meditation with a beautiful chant, a beautiful mantra that the underground swamis will share with us. I invite you to close your eyes or gaze softly on the ground before you. And let's just set an intention that the body will be strong and supportive and still during this meditation. And the mind will be focused and clear, not easily distracted by passing thoughts. And the heart will be open and receptive to any guidance or insights that come about because of this meditation. And I invite you to start paying attention to your breath. The inhale and the exhale. Allowing stress to be exhaled tension to be exhaled, calmness to be inhaled. Inhale calmness, exhale tension. Inhale peace, exhale stress. I invite you to allow my voice to speak for you, translating as necessary. I now release any feeling of separation from others. I let go of any judgment of others as different or alien. 
I recognize that we are all connected through spirit, through the energy of love. And as I focus on my heart space, I open to the wonderful unity that always exists, even when I cannot see it. I open my heart to compassion, to kindness, to seeing others as my family, as myself. As we go into a time of quiet, I invite you to use as a vehicle for deepening your meditation and an anchor to keep your thoughts focused. A simple affirmation. I'm filled with loving kindness. I'm filled with loving kindness. I am filled with loving kindness in the silence. As we bring our meditation to a close, we'll give thanks for the body for staying still, for the heart for being open, for the mind for being calm. Ernest Holmes told us there is but one life, one body of love, and all are part of it. And we move now to a mantra.
is a protection mantra, is that correct? Yeah, it's for protection and clearing the clouds of doubt. Ooh, I love it. So, it's truth um, from the ages and truth that's always been. And then guru is the, the that wisdom within us that brings us to the light. So, I love how your songs are just going so well today. <laughs> Nothing new there, but hey, it's great. So we do have a few announcements, folks, and I hope you can see that screen uh, without too much glare. We're beginning a book discussion on the 16th of March on braiding sweetgrass. If you're not familiar with this book, look it up. It's fabulous. It intertwines three stories, one of the Native American wisdom, one of the memoirs of the author, and one of a science background because the author is also a botanist. It's fantastic. And then we have a spring equinox bonfire. What's not to love? <laughs> that will be at beautiful Ann Baker's farm, and we'll have a little celebration for spring on that evening. 7 p.m. on the 20th. 27th of March, we're going to do a community hike, social, physically distant at Snavely, what's it? Snavely Ford Trail on Antietam Battlefield. You may have to look this up because it's not in the um, main section of the battlefield. It's off to the side and uh, a map is included with the email that I send out every week, which if you're not getting Please sign up at unityhagerstown.org. Again, unityhagerstown. <laughs> it's like a commercial. Unityhagerstown.org. <laughs> and then Holy Week wind down every day during Holy Week at noon on Facebook. We're going to have a very uh, short yet powerful meditation at Unity Hagerstown's page. And also, um, you know, typically at Easter we give out a small gift to those present and we're not we're not meeting in person right now so I thought that I'll just have them on my porch and you come by and pick one up and if you'd like to sit on the porch and visit for a moment then just text me beforehand or send me an email and I would love to just sit in that rocking chair and visit with you for a little bit. Gosh that sounds old doesn't it but it sounds mighty fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then our fundraiser which uh, I'm excited by because it is spring and this involves flowers, is uh, it's flower power. It's flower power. We're selling flowers online. This company is fabulous to work with. You order directly to them, pay them, and they will send you the product when the weather is warm enough for it, of course. They have a great selection. 
and then they send half the proceeds to Unity Hagerstown. Isn't that a great thing? If you feel like digging in the dirt and planting some strawberries, or even if you don't have a yard, there are some things they have. You can get a sprout kit, you know, and grow some healthy sprouts for your salads. So I invite you to check it out. The website is on there, unityhagerstown.fp, as in flower power, fundraising.com, or simply go to the link on the email newsletter. It's been great sharing this time with you. I'm so delighted that you've been here with us, um, singing and praying, and just being together, connecting. And if you enjoy what we do at Unity Hagerstown, you, you are uh, supportive of this, this mission, I wanted to share our vision statement. Guided by spirit within, we are joyfully united in unconditional love, honoring the divine in all, radiating the message of unity to the world. That's what we want to see happen. And without you, we can't do it. So I appreciate all your donations, all your offerings, uh, all your ties, because that allows us to move forward with this message of oneness and kindness and compassion and peace. Thank you, thank you so very much. And um, I think that's it. Huh? Yeah, I think that's it. Let's do the peace song. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, do that beatbox. <laughs> You're never not gonna be able to do it now. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was sent to me. With God as creator, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my trial of now. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Ah, enjoy this beautiful week. We've got nothing but sunshine, nothing but blue skies. Love you guys. See you next time. <laughs>